Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss security policies as a form of cybersecurity defense. To enhance cybersecurity, what we do is we create security policies. To do what? To strengthen our system, to strengthen our processes, we integrate those security policies across all organization level. For what purpose? So everyone knows what are the policies for the organization. Remember, the tone at the top in form of internal control, we need to know as a company, where do we stand when it comes to cybersecurity? Policies can show you this. Also, when it comes to ERM, enterprise risk management, there is a component called culprit and governance. Well, also through those security policies, we can show, we can demonstrate that we are serious about cybersecurity. So having a policies, because these policies outline the organization's security objective and strategic plan for security measures. So we're telling you, we have policies, we have specific rules that we are following when it comes to security policies. Now below security policies, we will have security standard. So those are below the policies. They act as a benchmark to meet policy goals. So think of security policies as overall, very broad. Security policy, security standard, they're detailing specific technologies and practices for compliance. They're standard, they're, they're more specific. Now below security standards, we have what we call the SOP. At the foundation, the standard operating procedures or SOPs. Here, what we do is we provide step-by-step, -step, basically instruction aligned with daily operation with security policies and standards. So eventually, eventually the people at the bottom, the people at the bottom, they have to implement the standard, they have to implement the policies because the, the security policies are very broad. The security standards are a little bit more specific, but as an employee, you want to know what is, what is the SOP so I can follow the standard operating procedures to minimize risk and boosting security. And this is what we will discuss in this session. I'm gonna first discuss, discuss security policies, security standard, then SOPs. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with security policies. Security policies act as the bedrock of an organization's security strategy. This is where you have all, everything written down, offering detailed roadmap, but at a high level for deployment and management of security measures across the enterprises. Those policies could be electronic, could be paper, nevertheless, they're written somewhere. These documents show how security applies to various organizational assets setting clear definition, allocating roles and responsibility again at a large, at, at a grand scale and establishing an acceptable risk level. Most importantly, security policies also serve as a testament to senior management committing to protecting the organization against cyber threat. Remember what I said earlier, those could be part of what? Those could be part of the control environment of the internal control. Those could be part of the ERM, corporate governance and culture. It shows that we have them. That's all what it shows. Now we have to go a step further, but they also, they show commitment against physical intrusions because we have a policies against this and the impact of natural disasters because they also discuss under those circumstances what needs to be done. Now to manage security concerns effectively, the organization, the company, what they would do is they will develop oftentimes specialized policies tailored to different areas of their operation. And this approach allowed a more focused and relevant implementation of the security measure across various domains. Why? Because sometimes we need user policy. What's user policy? It tells you how employees interact with IT resources, outlining what's acceptable, what's not. For example, you can download certain apps, you cannot download others. You can visit certain websites, you cannot visit others. 
and practices to ensure the secure use of IT within the organization. This is called user policy. Sometimes we might have regulatory policies. Those are designed to ensure compliance. Once you hear the word regulatory, it means someone is looking over you. So you wanna make sure you're in compliance. Banking, think of banking and healthcare. Compliance with relevant laws and regulation. These policies help the organization meet legal obligations and maintain standard for data protection, privacy, and other regulatory requirement. Sometimes we might have policies that are system-based. What's system-based? Focus specifically on the technology and platform that we're using, such as network infrastructure or software application, providing specific guidelines for secure configuration, maintenance, and use. So notice we have different policies, how to, how to use the system, if there's any regulatory policies, if there's any system policies. Also, we might have what we call acceptable use policies. In addition to these domain organization develop AUPs that span across these domains. Now, we're going to look at AUP separately because they are important. Define what users can and cannot do, like acceptable, what's acceptable, what not, with the organization IT assets and resources, ensuring that all activities align with overarching security goals. Now, the, the acceptable use policy, it's going to have a user policy, but it's more specific. Let's take a look at a quick example to illustrate. For example, a healthcare provider needing to protect patient data and comply with HIPAA. Now, the security framework would include the following. First, a user policy, a guideline for secure access to electronic healthcare, okay, EHRs, emphasizing strong password, multi-factor authentication, just a user policy. Then we'll have policies that's regulatory policies because we want to make sure since we're dealing with healthcare, we're in compliance with HIPAA. Procedures for handling patient data in compliance with HIPAA, focusing on encryption, data privacy, and security audit. Then we're going to have a system-based policies. Here are the rules for the secure configuration and maintenance of the system, including updates, access control, and unauthorized access monitoring. Also, an acceptable use policy support these policies by dictating rules for the general use of the IT resources, such as banning unauthorized software installation and legal activities with company devices. And this approach ensured that the healthcare provider not only protecting patient information, but also communicating employee responsibilities for maintaining security. And most importantly, in terms of HIPAA, we are in compliance. So this is what we need to know about security policies, the overall picture. Under security policies, once again, we could have security standards. Security standards are essential organizational guidelines or mandatory requirements. They're standards aimed at enhancing security. So you just have to follow them. Standard, these standards, which fall under the broader umbrella of security policies, you have your own, then you might be required to do other things. Detailed specific action and minimum performance level necessary for achieving security objective. They can include recommendation for policy implementation, uh, what could be some common examples? It could be recommendation from NIST, the National Institute of Standard and Technology, NIST. And we learned we had like several, seven or eight recordings about NIST. They could deal with privacy regulations such as the GDPR, which is the, the General Data Protection Regulation from the European Union, and obviously from other industries uh, like the healthcare, HIPAA, or industry-specific standard like a payment card industry, data security standard, PCI DSS. So those security standards are based on some recommendation because you are dealing in that industry. Again, you could add HIPAA to them as well. After the security standards, now you're gonna have the SOPs. SOPs or security operating procedures are detailed guides for specific security tasks. Here you are telling people what to do combining system, software, and physical action to meet security policy and standard goals. Because to implement, basically the SOPs are the actual, the foot soldiers, the foot soldiers that implement the standard and implement the security policies. So the SOPs are recommended to be segmented into separate documents to restrict comprehensive access to all security practices within the company. So simply put, they'll tell you what you are, what you are responsible for. In, in that sense, they're segmented. And this ensures that policy owners in different departments manage SOP relevant to their roles. So what's relevant in your department may, may not be relevant to another department. So a company could have several SOPs depending on which department they are targeting. So in a financial institution, a separate SOP exists for client data management because they're responsible for client data management. 
network security and incident responses, separate SOPs. So if the encryption standard for client data change, only relevant SOPs need to be updating. So you don't have to update the, the other departments, streamlining the process and maintaining security integrity across departments. Once again, just get a good, you have a good idea. What are security policies, the big picture, security standards and the SOPs, which kind of the, I guess I mentioned the foot soldiers of implementing policies and standards. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A healthcare company is reviewing its security policy framework. Which of the following is the primary purpose of implementing security policy within an organization? So what is the primary purpose for a healthcare company in reviewing its security policy? Is it to increase operational efficiency of business processes? Would security policies increase operational efficiency? Well, uh, I would say not necessary. Policies, they, they might reduce operational policy, especially for a healthcare company, because if they wanna follow certain security policies, it may take them a little bit longer to achieve certain goals. I would say it's not, it doesn't appeal to me as a good answer, but let's hold on it. To ensure compliance with regulatory requirement and protect sensitive data. Would you think this will be a primary purpose for a healthcare company to review, to implement security policies? I would say B is a good answer because when you implement security policies, it may not increase your operational efficiency because you have to take more steps. I would take out A, I'll keep B now. To enhance the company's marketing strategy and customer engagement. Well, if you have a good policy, uh, that's good for marketing, you can tell them, but it doesn't increase customer engagement for sure. It has nothing to do with customer engagement. Even marketing strategy, you don't use this as a marketing strategy because you're supposed to have a security policy. As a health, as a health care provider, you cannot tell your clients or potential customers, I have a good policy. You're supposed to have that. To reduce the cost of IT infrastructure by optimizing resource utilization. No, more policies, more security policies, if anything, it increased the cost. D does not, you know, it does not fit. I would say the reason you're reviewing the security policy, the primary reason is to ensure compliance with regulatory requirement and to protect sensitive data when it comes to healthcare company. I would say B is the answer. What should you do now? You wanna to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, resources, especially if you're studying for information systems and control CPA exam, your accounting courses, or any other professional certification. Invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe. Thank you.